No one has ever died from eating too many magic mushrooms. Now, people have died from consuming too much water, but nobody has ever in the history of magic mushrooms died directly as a result of mushroom poisoning. Now, people have died from making really stupid decisions while they were high, such as not limited to suicide, but nobody, I repeat, has ever received a fatal overdose simply from consuming too much, which is mind-boggling. Psilocybin mushrooms are currently being studied for their antidepressant qualities from universities such as Johns Hopkins. One study initially demonstrated relief of major clinical depression issues in adults for up to one month. Now I know that doesn't sound very impressive, so they did a follow-up study on those same participants, which indicated for some that the antidepressant qualities lasted an entire year. Now keep in mind that this is alongside supportive psychotherapy, they're not just tripping alone in their basement here. And to be clear, this was achieved using only two doses of psilocybin. Now, if just two doses could achieve this much success, imagine what regular scheduled doses over a long-term period could do. Researchers conducted another study where they administered psilocybin mushrooms to end-of-life cancer patients, and over 80% of them claimed it dramatically reduced their anxiety around death. I still feel pain from the cancer but there's an underlying reality that it's okay. And six months later, those who were still with us still reported significant decreases in their overall anxiety. Psilocybin mushrooms, as well as other psychedelics, have been proven to help people quit and stave off addiction. In fact, the co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, Bill Wilson, was only able to cure his own alcohol addiction, not just with the 12 steps, but also with the aid of psychedelic psychotherapy. Again, this is psychedelics used with a psychotherapist, which are going to have slightly different or maybe dramatically different results than psychedelics when they're just taken alone and on their own. The intent that you bring into the experience can greatly influence the outcome. In some cities and states, psilocybin mushrooms have been decriminalized, and in some places like Vancouver, Canada, you can actually walk into a store right off the street and buy mushrooms off the shelf, as well as other psychedelics. Mushrooms seem to be the next in line to receive the legal status following cannabis. And now a quick word from this video's sponsor. In regards to 10 things, or at least one thing that you didn't know about your internet provider is they are actually watching everything that you're doing. And there's a way to prevent this. What you need is a VPN. And this video is graciously sponsored by Surfshark. <laughs> what they do is they basically come in and they block your information from being available to your internet provider to see. So it's kind of like a way to take your privacy and security into your own hands. And if you follow the link in my video description and sign up for Surfshark today, you are going to get a whopping 83% off and an extra three months free, which as far as I know, unlocks the best price for VPN presently on the market. Another huge bonus that you get is if you're using something like Hulu or Netflix, you can actually go in and change your location, which unlocks a whole slew of new videos to watch. So if you're a movie nut like me, then this is a great way to just, you know, keep consuming more and more content. And finally, the more of you guys that sign up, the more likely they are to sponsor future videos, which helps me. Now we've got, uh, you know, a budding team of one editor over here. So <laughs> we have a bigger team now. So, you know, all the help we can get is greatly appreciated. So if you do appreciate my content, head on over to Surfshark, use the code psyched and sign up today to keep all of that internet privacy and security in your own hands. In small doses called microdoses, mushrooms can help people in a very similar fashion as SSRI medication does. In fact, there is a growing community of microdosers who have left pharmaceuticals behind and swear by taking small doses of psilocybin mushrooms to help with their creativity, their depression, it, it alleviates it, it increases their overall mood, their connection to others, just their enjoyment for life. Now, it should be noted that these users are not consuming enough for a full-blown trip. A microdose is, depending on who you talk to, either subperceptual or just slightly perceptual doses of mushrooms. That means they're taking very small amounts, anywhere from as low as 50 milligrams to three or 400 milligrams, depending on the user's own tolerance. They're also usually not dosing every day. There are two common protocols. There's Fatimins, and then there's the Stamets protocol. The Stamets protocol entails taking them for four or five days in a row, then taking a weekend break, and the Fatimin protocol is a little different. You take it one day, and then you take two days off, and then again. And of course, there's some people who just say balls to the wall, screw these protocols, and they just take it every day, and they alternate with different compounds, which I've tried tried, well, all of them myself. And in case you're wondering, I'm presently not microdosing. I'm on the I'm taking a giant break protocol. 
Psilocybin, the chemical compound, the active alkaloid in the mushroom, which is where they get their name from, is actually inactive on its own. In fact, the body converts the psilocybin seen here into the active psilocin seen here, also known as 4-hydroxy-DMT, through a process called decarboxylation, where it cleaves this whole chunk off, and it's instead the converted psilocin that is responsible for all of these psychedelic effects, or rather most of the psychedelic effects. More on this in a minute. In Canada and some other countries, there is a gray area legal chemical called 4-acetoxy-DMT, also known as psilocetin, which is also inactive, oh, big shocker, but through the same process of decarboxylation is converted directly into the active psilocin, making 4-acetoxy-DMT a prodrug to psilocin in the same way that psilocybin is a prodrug to psilocin. Now what a prodrug is, is a compound that is inactive on its own, but when consumed, it converts into the active chemical. I find this very interesting because for the longest time, you couldn't get mushrooms in the store. And before all of this, you could still receive 4-ACO-DMT online through research chemical websites, which was pretty much the exact same thing as psilocybin. In fact, in certain scientific studies, I believe it was professed by David Nutt, correct me if I'm wrong on this, they used 4-ACO-DMT in replacement to actual psilocybin because it was easier to obtain and they saw the exact same results in the study as if they were using psilocybin. Meaning the two hypothetically should be interchangeable, although people in the psychedelic community anecdotally do report that 4-ACO-DMT is a little different, but I just think this is all hogwash. I think that every trip from one to the other can be dramatically different and it depends on what you're bringing into the experience, meaning set and setting, your own unique blend of neurotransmitters that are gonna be varied depending on the day even. There's so much that goes into a trip, it's really hard to say whether the same or whether they're different because like I said, no two trips are alike. Now, what a lot of people also don't know is mushrooms actually contain more active alkaloids than just psilocybin and psilocin. They also contain something called baocystin and norbaocystin, which, although they're usually in very small quantities, have been shown to be psychedelically active on their own. I have yet to read of someone having a full-blown baocystin trip, and I think it's because you would have to make it in a lab because there's such a small amount in the mushrooms and no one's gone out of their way to do this yet. Surprisingly, somebody please do this. And finally, most people note that psilocybin mushrooms commonly turn blue. Some people mistake this as mold. Well, it's not mold. What it actually is, is the psilocin. Compared to psilocybin, psilocin is actually relatively unstable. And in the presence of oxygen and acidity, will break down into this blue color. Now, when you consider that psilocin on its own is unstable and psilocybin is stable, and that our bodies are designed to convert the stable psilocybin into the unstable psilocin, only once it's actually gone down our throats and it's safe to become psilocin, where its instability isn't going to matter anymore, it kind of makes it seem like we were designed to eat magic mushrooms. Not to mention they also greatly resemble the molecule that we naturally all have within us called serotonin. As you can see, they're very similar. And psilocybin, or psilocin rather, fits into the same slot that serotonin fits into. That's why it's active. Our body thinks we're getting serotonin and then it's like, oh, this is a little, whoa, different. And it boggles my mind that we are designed to have an experience and that in nature, nature is like, oh, well, we can't just give them psilocin because it'll break down before they consume it. So let's have this mushroom instead contain this other thing that humans naturally are going to convert into psilocin so they can actually consume it. Like that's wild. It's almost like the mushroom intended us to eat it because it wanted to experience what it was like to be a human. Now ain't that a trip. Anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and watch more of the videos, all those bleepity blue videos popping up over here. And if you want uncut content with the stuff that we cannot, absolutely under no circumstance show on YouTube, head on over to our Patreon page. As little as $2 a month gives you unlimited access to all of the uncensored videos. And yeah, that's it for today, guys. I'm gonna see you guys all in the next one. Cheers. And six months later, those who were still with us still reported a dramatic reduction, still reported a dramatic reduction, a dramatic reduction. <laughs> and six months later, those who were still with us still reported a dramatic reduction. <laughs> Reduct, reduction, reduction. Why can't I talk? I, I swear to God, this is the weirdest thing ever. I can't talk.